In this tutorial, I'll show you how to work with simple images in Final Cut Express. It is very easy to include still images in Final Cut. Here I have opened one of my bins that has a number of still images, photographs. To put them into the timeline, I can simply pick one, drag it into the timeline, and release. I can position it wherever I want by moving it left and right. I can change its duration by dragging one end or the other end of the clip. I can also set the duration to a specific time by right-clicking, going to Duration, and entering the appropriate duration using time code. If I would like this to be 6 seconds, I would type 0600 and then click on OK. This is now exactly 6 seconds long. These are the frames. This is seconds minutes and hours. So this would be six seconds exactly in length. Again, I can move this and position this wherever I would like. Also, when working in the timeline, it is quite often necessary to position things exactly in relationship to either the playback head or other clips. To make that easier and more precise, you want to be using the snap. Snap is controlled by clicking on the rightmost icon in the upper right corner of the timeline or pressing the letter N. In that way, if I have the playback head positioned in a certain location and I want a clip to be positioned exactly there, you'll see that with the snap on, it snaps or jumps right to that edit line. If I have other clips in my timeline, I can position them very exactly and easily. You'll see that it snaps, those little triangles that are at the top and bottom of the clip, indicating that it's snapping to that particular location. I can once again, set this exactly to some duration. I'm going to set this one also to six seconds. So now I've laid in two clips. I can also take and select a number of clips. So here I have four clips selected. Click and hold and drag them into my timeline. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit here so that you can see that. You'll see that I have a gap here. I could, it would be very uh, efficient, but I could take each one of these clips and move them over to the right. I could also simply take and click and hold and drag a selection window around everything, and then click and hold and drag that all the way over till it meets up with the other clip. All right, let's go on. So here I have a number of clips that are in my timeline. And I can also, if I decide to shorten one of these, one of the problems would be if I shorten this, I'm left with a gap. What we want to do is be using the Ripple Edit tool to do that instead. So I'm going to undo that, go over to my toolbar, and in this location click and hold. And instead of using the Roll tool, I want to be using the Ripple edit tool or the RR. With this tool, you'll notice that there's a little, it looks like a can with some film coming out of it, a little leader. If I have it positioned there, click and hold, I can then drag it to some new location. The other ones then go and move over to fill that gap. If I take this clip on this end, have it pointing to the right, and drag it shorter, it shortens it, the other ones move. In. So I could continue shorting these, shortening these to the desired length. All right, let's say that's what I want. Let's just do a little bit more here. All right. And sometimes the snap will actually cause you some difficulty in positioning the cursor. If that's the case, simply turn the snap off by clicking the icon the button or pressing the letter N. These clips can be rearranged. I'll want to make sure that I switch from my Ripple Edit tool to my Selection tool. So if I want to reposition these, I could simply drag one into a new location. So and here's where I want to make sure I have my snap set. So I'm going to press the letter N on the keyboard. So that one snaps into place and I can simply pop this one into a different location. 
you do have to watch that if you take a clip and position it on top of another clip and I'm going to actually turn the snap off first for this and I wouldn't need to but I want to position it in between so I can show you better what's going to happen what it will do is overwrite that clip so now I have a piece of the one image and it's been replaced with the other image in that part and then the little piece that's left over so the beginning and the end are the same that's m maybe what I did not want to have happen so you do have to watch when you're dragging your clips that you're not going to overwrite another clip alright so I'm going to go ahead and just undo that put that back where it was now I can also add transitions in between clips you'll find the transitions in the effects tab of the browser we have a number of different effects and it includes video transitions which is what we're referring to in this particular case so let me go ahead and pick a transition I'm going to use the cross dissolve a very common transition and I'm simply going to drag it into my timeline and I can usually put it in one of three places to the left of the edit right on or centered on the edit or to the right the normal position would be centered on the edit if I take and position my cursor into the timeline, click and hold, I can scrub across my timeline and see the effect of that transition. Now right now my snap is off and it's very useful when scrubbing that it is turned off because if it is turned on, it will want to snap to those natural points in your piece, making it hard to see the actual effect so with transitions if you're trying to scrub across them turn off your snap this transition I can adjust it so I can use my tools I can make this longer or shorter to whatever length I want I can right click on it put in a specific duration to make it one second I can actually double click on it load it into my viewer so that I can make some more specific or more precise edits Here's my edit line. Here's the length of the transition. I can once again drag it longer or shorter, whatever I would like. And I'm just going to put that back to where it was. All right, I can continue to take the transition and drag it to my other edit points. Again, being careful to make sure that it is centered on the edit. I could also place a transition at the beginning or end of my piece. In this case, I'm going to use the dip to color. I'm going to click and hold, and I'm going to center that on the end of the clip. And what this particular transition will do, I'm going to double click on it to load it to the viewer, but it will dissolve to a particular color, in this case, black. So when it gets to the end, my image will gradually fade out, and it'll be fading to black. That concludes on how to use simple images in Final Cut Express.